Oh hey, we're back. You're at the mobility project. Tonight we're going to work on um, thinking about ungluing ourselves from either end. Specifically, we're going to hit the wrist, which is a real problem, especially in these high positions of what we call neural tension. When I lock the wrist off or I end up trapping, I can really end up trapping a lot of the kind of the neural tissues here. And then we also see kind of a lot of neural entrapment, neural problems trapped in, in kind of involved from tight neck. So we're thinking about ungluing the wrist and we're going to unglue the neck as it relates. So we're, we're going to call this one unglue yourself from either side. So homework number one is we're going to take a, we're going to do a good old fashioned wrist mode, test your wrist extension. What we're going to do is get some distraction on here. And you can think of this as uh, a distraction or mobilization with movement. And what I'm going to do is see how the, the band is pulling against the wrist. I'm going to go ahead and wind that up as far as I can. Ugh! Trap myself down. The band pulls on the wrist this direction. And I'm going to block my own hand. Arm is straight. And I'm really going to work on this rotation that we keep talking about. And I'm going to go ahead and just anchor the hand down and flex. And what's going to happen is that that band is pulling the joint that way. It's pulling the kind of the, the forearm bones back on the carpal bones. And I anchor, create a nice firm platform. And I'm just going to rotate forward. And what you'll feel is that you won't feel impinged or a pinch in the front of the wrist, but it's a really nice way to kind of open up the back of that and work on that extension. And really big global extension that isn't just happening through the, through the fingers, but it's really happening at the wrist. So that's the piece. And then I can just go hunt around in these corners and hang out and just oscillate back and forth. Try not to have the wrist, the, the elbow bent so you can keep it straight, and then really hammer in these corners. And you'll feel some funny stuff in there, but it makes a big difference to open up those tissues. And then, Obviously, you'll test, retest, and see how that feels, and even try your front rack. You know, I think you'll be surprised at what goes on with that position. It's significant, all right? So that's homework number one. Just get your wrist unglued. We don't realize that we do these kind of high neural tension positions, and this is one of them. When we do a lot of high alert cleaning, hanging out in this position is one of them. That's one of the reasons we have to keep the shoulder engaged. It shortens the neural tissues of the neck. Even when I drop here, that's actually a sensitizing movement where I can drop and create more neural distance. And this is a support position. So, you know, just one of the reasons that good technique is good technique. So that's homework number one, excuse me. Number two, I lost my ball. Let's see where I went, there it is. Homework number two is to go ahead and get yourself wound up into kind of a bully position. And you can do this from the high rack, you can do this from that low rack, band. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, and th so this is basically put the shoulder into this wound up kind of uh, uh, quadrant where I'm really looking at the, the front of the quadrant, and I'm gonna take the ball, I'm gonna tack it into some of these tissues. It's gonna be my hand, but then I'm just gonna fall away. What I'm trying to do is just tie my neck motion into the shoulder motion. So again, just even this little tack and hang out. And the goal here today is just to bias that shoulder into some internal rotation, and then go ahead and just open up the neck a little bit. And if this is too extreme, come on out. Even grab a pole or something else behind your back. And then get into that position. But we're going to just tie and try to tighten up the neck. You're going to just drop ditch the ball. You can anchor. And then look for a round. We're going to try to try these scalings into this first rib. You're going to catch the platysma all this. But just by anchoring the shoulder, you're going to notice that by opening up here, that's going to give you more room into these internal rotation extension positions, which is where we are, for example, jumping to generate force. We don't jump this way. We internally rotate. That's the internal rotation extension idea. Okay. The last piece is to go ahead and get the same stretch where we open up the band. This is going to pull that arm back and catching the tricep here. But that's also loading that scapula into that good position. And then I'm going to turn my head and catch the trap and the levator and just anchor out. So just gentle. Remember, if your face goes numb, stop. If something's weird, stop. If you have neck problems and herniated discs and this feels weird, don't do it. But it's common to forget about the neck as it's related to the shoulder. And how many times I see athletes come in with shoulder problems and then I just, hey, by the way, take, turn your head and you're like, see, is that, is that a problem? Full range of motion is deep rotation on the neck. And uh, you can see this is the side I just stretched. I can go 90, which is full range, and I should be able to go all the way over. And the other side is much stiffer. So just by opening up that piece, I get a little more range there. And you might work either direction. It doesn't matter. But what we want you guys to know is that, of course, your traps, big upper rotators of the scapula actually attach to the neck. 
Novel concept. Scalenes, short neck flexors, these things get short. If we can tie this in, we open this up, we open up that whole brachial plexus, untrap that stuff, improve range of motion, unglue you from the wrist, and now suddenly, magically, things get a lot better. So, working on both ends today of the arm, that's the theme. We'll see you tomorrow.